Welcome back to another episode of An Perspective where I, Tony, from Anna Gallery, sit down with friends all over the world to talk and to learn new perspectives around Indonesian textile art. And today, I'll be talking to Valentino Luis, a travel journalist who is now back in his hometown in Flores, who is on a quest to spread the world about his culture, specifically through handwoven textile through his brand, Innocencia Handwoven. Without further ado, do sit back, relax, and enjoy Valentino's Unrespectives. Welcome, Valentino, to today's uh, episode of Unrespectives. Uh, as I have uh, mentioned earlier before we press the record button that I have been following your work as a travel writer and photographer for in-flight magazines and recently uh, found out uh, that you have a brand, uh, Innocencia Handwoven, uh, that promotes uh, Flores uh, woven uh, products, uh, products made with uh, Flores woven textiles. And yeah, I would like to find out more about your journey, your stories and perspectives in uh, working with them. So maybe first of all, uh, give us a little introduction about uh, yourself, your background and your journey with uh, Uh, woven textiles. Okay, thank you so much and nice to be a part of this. Uh, thank you so for invitation also. My name is Valentina Luis. I am actually a travel journalist. I born and raised in Flores. Um, so, so that's all. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, how, okay, uh, what's your experience with woven textiles? Okay, my experience, uh, I knew and I connected with handwoven since I was born. I mean, as a, as a child, since I, as, a, as a kid. So my mother came from Weber's family, so she and her siblings can do ikat handwoven. And I've seen the activities every day since I was a kid, but I was not fascinated to involve myself into this because I have other interests. Uh, traveling, writing, photography. I spent most of my time for that and became became a nomad, moved from place to place. Uh, yeah, so um, I just recently, I I, 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 I I could say that I just fallen in love with handwoven recently, only less than six, six years. Yeah, less than five years. And then really seriously into handwoven, Uh, seen or uh, handwoven work uh, in the last three week, three three years actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, what is that? You know, moment that uh, now that you are uh, starting your own brand as well. Uh, what what triggers you to do that? Okay, so okay, it's a long journey. It's a long story, but um, okay, I uh, share that. In 2014, I was in Bali. I felt something kind or of my life, and I decided to leave Bali as my home base and back to Flores. I started with Jordi Trip Social Voluntary Project. I founded for uh, a rural area in Flores. Then, due to the connection and interaction with locals, people of Flores, slowly I became it became my my record my uh, contemplations about knowing who I am as a Florinus, my, my root, my culture, I realized that I dream too much about foreign lands, about foreign culture, and I didn't care. I underestimate my own culture. So I started to learn forest history and, and forest culture. My interest in hand woven uh, rose in that period, but very slowly. I didn't think, never think that I want to jump seriously into this scene for handwoven. And then in, thousand, in 2017, someone from Java gave me a gift, uh, a trolley bag made from handwoven, but not for handwoven, from uh, Sumba handwoven. And she said that it's this trolley bag uh, will be great to carry wherever I go as a travel journalist to present myself as a person from East Nusa Tenggara. And every time I saw it, uh, every time I go, when, uh, whenever I saw it with the trolley bag, people came to me and asked, uh, is that true handwoven? It's not printed. It's, 
it's really handwoven. It's a drill. Where are you from? Uh, how to get this, etc. So many questions. Um, the, uh, there are the questions related to technique, the, the patterns, uh, the process came to me and, and my knowledge about handwoven is very slightly. I know just a little. So every time when I came back to my house, I bombarded my mother with a lot of inquiries and questions. I observed what she does, her works, and then I learn day by day. I don't want to go out. I just like so interested. I just want to know every detail of her works. And one day my mom said, it will be better and it will be precious if I carry bags made from her handwoven. And she explained that actually our family, our clan, we have our own patterns. And it is truly my identity. So I can explain more and I can tell Sarah more story if I wear my own uh, clan pattern. So it's it's become like it, it was my my aha moment. I could say, yeah, it's like oh yeah, it's not just handwoven. It's not a piece of textile, but it has a lot of story and and it's easier for me to wear something from my own my own culture from something from my own clan so yeah that's that's the the the, the great moment and i really proud and embrace it i think it is is really important to embrace yeah <laughs> yeah uh yes uh, could you share us some of those uh patterns or stories of your family's textile patterns Okay, uh, we have, actually we have a lot of uh, patterns, uh, ikat patterns, uh, I have it here. No, we have like three or four that I recognize and I did uh, observe because uh, I came from Asika Regency in eastern part of Flores and in um, previous era that uh, most of family of clan or clans in Sika, they have their own pattern. Because pattern is, it is, uh, because, because Ika patterns also are identity. So people, wherever people wear it, and then where, where, wherever they go out of their village, we, we, we could recognize where they come from, from the pattern that they use. And also for my family, so, uh, <clears throat> It's still practice today, wherever we go, or especially for women, if they wear the certain kind of pattern, and then we know that, oh, this is from this family or this clan from the pattern. So we have like three or four uh, patterns and still, I still, um, I still have like so many uh, like works to do with this pattern because uh, I only exposed two patterns from my clans already, but few patterns left that still need moment because my mom still like this is already. I, this is I realized that the pattern is not just easy pattern. I mean, not easy, not easy to share. They 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 treat the patterns as a part of the they are uh, something like so precious for them as an identity and they don't want to like spread it easily to everyone. Not all weavers could have this kind of pattern. So um, I interest to like more and more pattern for my family, but my mom said that no, it's not for sale. <laughs> it's just for us. If you want to wear, then you wear, but not to sale or not to give to, to or somebody else it belongs to us so yeah okay but i say to my mom mom if you only we only keep it then people don't know that. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's interesting and how do you balance that out like uh because you said that you actually like uh tell the stories of two of them and then uh, some of them there is kind of like reserved for the family so how do you balance that 
Uh, one one of the patterns that I really, whenever I tell the story of this pattern about about the story of this pattern, it be, I got goosebumps because it was really a pattern of my mom clans, and only my mom, two of my family, my clan, they they still have it. So it's like almost um, lost. And when I when I uh, sew it up again to public and share it. I tell the story about this part and that it belongs to our family, and then our family, our clans that already like spread out through Indonesia. One by one, they contact us and then they tell. They told me, Falen, I'm also your family member. <laughs> I'm also your your uncle. Yeah, we are part of the family, something like that. And I was like, oh yeah, this is the 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 strength of the pattern that it could uh, bound us, and that is could also like gather us together as a as a big family. Yeah, this is the the process. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is interesting uh, that you use the textiles and then you manage to. Uh, gather your family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. because we already like spread out throughout this country, and then my mom very surprised that I told him like, "Oh, mom, this is a message from um, uh, what's up from this person. You know her? Uh, she said that her father name is blah 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 blah." I said, "Oh yeah, that's my uncle. Where is where is he now? So, yeah, she is in Singapore, or she is in Australia. Wow." Yeah, that's our family. So, so yeah, like contact each other again. Okay. And it's nice. Like I realized that our family now becomes like I know my family better now from my from my my mom. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Is there a certain uh, restrictions uh in terms of who can wear what or do you have like uh, restrictions in terms of a process that only certain people are able to do the weaving and so on? Oh yeah, uh, actually not really in, in Sika and Woven because uh, but something special here is that women it's, it's before they could do all the process because this process also symbolize that they are they are multitasking women. They could fix everything by them by by themselves. So, um, but it's it it will become like long process. And for one pieces of come often also takes like so many like so many so many days. I mean, months could be only one uh, one process. And it's also a pro. It becomes also. Uh, uh, a dilemma for us if we want to set it out. I mean, to solve it also become as a product because I mean we can we cannot only ask someone to do it from the first process to the the final process by herself because it will take so many times. So we have to um, like each of these people could do only one or two process and then the other could do the rest. Something like that. Yeah, I do the the kind of like toys sometimes i feel it's okay to maximize my product but sometimes also i feel worry because yeah i worry that in the next period or like in, the, in the next few years people only weavers only master in one or two process because they only focus, yeah. Because we train them to, yeah. we push them to focus only for one or two process. Okay. They could not do this the rest of the process, uh, all the process again, yeah, something like that. So it's becoming like a very specialized. Yeah. Field. Yeah. So they only yeah. specialize yeah. in one or two steps. Yeah. Uh. Because we we need like um, more than forty process. Uh, in ikat weaving of Sika, ah, Sika ikat, ikat weaving, but generally we only say like uh, 14 or 15 steps, main steps, but in in the whole process, it more than 40, yeah, more than 40 steps from the very base. Mm -hmm. And so how many people normally like work on a piece of cloth? 
Okay, in in Ocencia, I do like uh, three three rivers. My mom is the main <laughs> is the main processor. <laughs> she manages everything. She choose the, the 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 patterns and also she do the composition. She arrange the, all the compositions and then also she pick the colors. And then after she 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 did the the ikat. The, uh, the type and then uh, she gave to other papers to to do the dye. My auntie do the dyes and finish the dye and then give back to my mom and then my mom fix them, prepare them before the uh, final process, the weaving process. And then the weaving process, uh, the final process uh, will become my our neighbor's job. Mm. So it's like my mom to my aunt, my aunt to my neighbor, yeah, something like that. Yes. Uh, do you weave yourself? Uh, I want to. I want to. I, I, I could say that I know now better now, and I really want to do it. I, I want to do it uh, by myself, but it still feels strange because um, in our culture, in Sika culture, uh, uh, handwoven is a woman. Uh, activity is not for men, so it's still like um, neat process. But I want to do it <laughs> secretly, mm. and then, but but it's interesting because uh, last uh, two 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 months before, I meet a man who also do ikat weaving in in Sika. Yeah, and it's interesting. So I mean, we could discuss something about that. Yeah. Okay. I want to I want to do like a special project, probably photography project that not only so the 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 woman side, but also uh, how men involved also in in handwoven because I mean generally people only say that this is woman thing, but actually men take so many uh, part of this uh, uh, this process. Maybe you can share some of them, like how the men are involved. Because for the for the uh, the tools also made by, by by men, yeah, yeah, of course, because women cannot do that. Like they cut the yeah. the bamboo or the wood and stuff. So they, they 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 are the architect of the tools. And then when I when I go to when I visit the market, I found that mostly men who sell the uh, the cotton, not the woman, but mostly mm -hmm. men. Yeah, who sells the the cottons, the the uh, uh, the basic uh, needs or in, in ingredients. Also, like paper for the patterns. Like because in 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 Sikaritensi, we also <clears throat> the the pattern also spread out through the took the papers that they copy one by one and then they collect it and then also they sell it in the market, in the public market. And also now I found that the man that I told you before that he also do the, he also does also the, the handwoven. So I think it's interesting. I mean, I want to, I want to show uh, the public that this is men, men also take so many uh, important parts in in handwoven. Uh, do you guys uh, plant your cotton as well? No, we don't. We don't uh, plant the cotton. We mostly buy it mm -hmm. already in uh, polyester or something. Mm -hmm. uh, cotton and also uh, the one uh, silk uh, from the yeah. so yeah. Mm -hmm. And in terms of uh, process, so I believe they are mostly ikats, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. mostly. And uh, with natural dyes as well. Yeah, we use natural dye, like in my backgrounds mm -hmm. here uh, in Vigo. Oh, yeah. Nice. So I want also to do like two, two, two kind of uh, ikat weaving, ikat and woven. Uh, one side for for natural dye and other side for the uh, synthetic dye because I mean to accommodate the the, uh, the market. Yes. Yeah, the market. <coughs> And part of it uh, with Innocentia, uh, first of all, what does Innocentia mean, if there is any... <laughs> okay. So in all this story, uh, 
born from my mom. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, yeah, I name it after my mom's mother, my, my uh -huh. mom's name. So uh, this is nice. actually her first name, Innocencia. So her full name is Innocencia de Mendes. And I feel like it's like the universe is like really for me, it's like, it's like destiny because I mean, the name Innocencia is sounds so really great, so really nice. So, why and I don't use it, so I pick her name uh, as the brand name. And also it's motivated as she really proud and happy every time when I share the story about the product because she feel like, yeah, this is came from her, her hand, yeah, something like that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's very nice. And uh, I believe you are not also just uh, selling textile on its own, but also make it into different products. If you yeah. can uh, share with us like the process of the design process uh, of how you work uh, textiles into coming up with products. Okay. Uh, it's also separated into two parts because I, I, I don't want only uh, do only uh, products the products but also I want to keep it for our own collections or our own uh, heritage our own inheritance because so it's time when I do like I pick one new new patterns always we decided to do two to two, two things or two Fabian so the one the first one the original one we keep it like based on the rule of the, the weaving like based on our 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 local uh, rule and then the, the the other one is for the market so i do like i need to know like the compositions of the products like what kind of product that i want to uh, we want to to make it for the bags or for the for the the, the jacket etc so we try to um uh to compo to compose it like to make it like become the product that is nice to see yeah because if we if we only follow the the, the rule according to our, our our culture then it's hard to become the product because sometimes the pattern is not fit with the the, the product part the, the design of the pattern so i need to to know what kind of the product that I want to do, and then if the design, if I already uh, already have the design, so I have to um, coordinate with my mom, like how how big is the pattern that fits for this product, something like that. So it becomes like a really interesting uh, process. I really like it, and I start like, oh yeah, this pattern. I have I start to count how big is the pattern. I know like exactly how to count it. Oh yeah, this part is probably for 60 centi, then for the 60 centi of the main pattern, it means that we know we need how many uh, uh, how many uh, cotton that we need. Yeah, how many cotton that we have to buy, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really, really nice. I like I like to enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, of course definitely we do not want to cut, right? Uh, yeah, full yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. The okay. products. Because if we are already involved with these things and we feel like so sorry because working with this kind of textile with all the manual and traditional uh, technique, it's hundred percent we will put our emotion <laughs> with this. So I feel so bad every time it's uh, if someone like asking like every time I also have like this this kind of dilemma i want to sell it or i want to own <laughs> it, it for yourself myself. <laughs> yeah it's always like that <laughs> so, well some people told me like keep the best one for yourself <laughs> yeah, right yeah true true yeah that's true yeah mm -hmm. and uh so you started this in 2019 is it the brand yeah uh 2000, 2018 actually, we, we released our first product, but 2017, I start, I start to plan it, yeah, in 2017, and then we, we released our first uh, product in 2018, so it's just like three years now. Yeah, and what sort of uh, products, uh, uh, I heard you mentioned luggage, and what else do you have? 
yeah we have like uh trolley bag luggage and also uh duffel bag uh and then backpack mm-hmm. and, and uh, uh what else uh, we have jackets bomber jackets and also uh so few few variants of uh clubs bag yeah mm-hmm. and also a uh, camera strap i say okay yeah. <laughs> so uh it seems it's very you as the explorer <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 become like my playground actually <laughs> yeah nice and how's the reception of uh the people so far your co- customers and so my most of, most of the customer i i know that they mostly mostly they interest because of the story Because I mean, our province is Nusa Tenggara. Our island Flores is like home for so many ikat and woven. So it's like Mecca for the for the hand woven. Yeah, Mecca for the hand woven. So I mean, it becomes like um, it's not that new thing to sell a uh, product from hand yeah. So I think that the the story of the patterns and the techniques and how we deliver uh yeah how to deliver the story is is, is more important uh, mm-hmm. that's the attention and it becomes also uh, uh my concern to say uh, uh about the hand woven also mm-hmm. how many uh weavers are there now in your we area have like less than 20 actually we only have uh 16 uh 16 uh members. we are only a small group of the members and then they work uh in their house mm-hmm. not in i don't i don't i don't make it like uh we call it indonesia a sanggar something like that mm-hmm. yeah we, we are in community but they work mm-hmm. in their own house because i don't want to take it them and then they should live their own activity because i mean weaving is not the main activity they have to take care their their family their children and also other things so yeah it's only it's mainly i could say that is they work by by request yeah, something like mm-hmm. that make it easier for them and also do the do the pandemic period also i feel that like it saved me because mm-hmm. we don't come collect them every day yeah mm-hmm. but they they work their home so the pandemic they could do still do it yeah mm-hmm. so are these weavers uh belong to the same clan or no yes. no uh our neighbor mm-hmm. yeah but so not uh, necessarily uh, the same heritage uh same, same family yeah same family so, uh not yeah 50 same family and then the rest are our neighbor because i don't want to complicate like if they stay too far how yes. we communicate is other so let's speak the neighbor so we can communicate uh, it's easily yes, no. <laughs> yeah and definitely the pandemic is uh when everybody is not to be in a group uh, that yeah. kind of like helps yeah. definitely yeah. and uh talking about covid uh what are some of the challenges that you face while you are running uh your brand my challenge uh actually i think it is the same challenge because uh this is kind of uh artisan work is very slow fashion product so we cannot we cannot product uh produce uh the textile like so many textile in 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 a short period so for so time but I don't think also it's a problem or it's a challenge. I think it should be like that. <laughs> we just keep it like we just release uh, in in few items with the uh, with the same uh, patterns and then we change again in this in different patterns, something like that. Mm-hmm. So uh, are you saying that uh, you have the same product but with like different patterns? Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Because different patterns, and also good is that uh, hand woven because it's hand made by hand. Then 
we don't have like set time um, uh, structure or the composition that exactly the same as the previous product, even it's the same pattern. Mm -hmm. But of course, like the line, the the colors, it could be different. So I, I think it's yeah. It's some this is also the special the special from handwoven. Yeah. Oh, the one that uh, kind of like reminds me is uh, I'm not sure if you are aware of the brand Ethnotech. It's a backpack brand, but they have like this panel so that mm -hmm. you can just change the panels into the panels are made of uh, traditional textiles. So it could mm -hmm. be batik, uh, hand woven textiles. So if people get bored with one design, they can just buy the panel and attach it to the backpack. So oh. that's kind of like, yeah. Interesting idea. Okay, I need to observe first. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway, I digress. Uh, what what else uh that is challenging in promoting the textiles? I think is no maybe because I say that it is a playground. It's and also uh fine, fine. the brand is actually my 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 playground something my, my my school also i want to know myself i know i want to know my root my culture so it's not that important to rush the product to to become like bigger and bigger so and in terms of uh the pandemic uh, how does that impact you <clears throat> the pandemic uh when it just happened for like the 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 earlier uh, period it was a little bit problem because uh, the the mobilizations and also the transportations was cut off uh, the flight also banned uh, the ships also and then it's hard for us that we live in a small island in Indonesia is like <laughs> consists of hundred thousand islands so it's very difficult to to deliver it uh, to move to other island when it's cut off, and it was like I was like, oh, how how to how to manage it to to be sent to to the customer. But after a few months later, and then it's already uh, better than normalized, and then it's yeah, it becomes like normal. I think there is no different before and and after the pandemic even now it's like getting busy busier than before because i mean people spend more their time in the front of the laptop and gadgets uh, and smartphone so they spend more time to to play with the yeah, browsing and yeah and look at the uh, <clears throat> instagram and so on so yeah the request uh, came more and more in uh, during the pandemic uh, compared to to the era people and also and also this pandemic I uh, had a lot of uh, invitations to to be a speakers and stuff like that so yeah this active than before it's nice to to use it as a time to learn more and study more about about yes, yeah. uh, definitely. And uh, yeah, so most probably like the biggest challenge is in terms of uh, accessibility, uh, the transport and yeah. Yeah. of materials as well as getting stuff out to your customers. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Yeah, <clears throat> that's true. And also the marketing, uh, we cannot like do uh we, we cannot enter into uh mainstream uh market platform such as yeah some indonesians uh, market platform because we have only few uh, products and also uh if we are in if we live in eastern part of indonesia the the cost of the deliver is higher like three times higher than in west of indonesia so i don't want to to uh sell or to promote in this uh platform because i mean the the price will be three times uh 
uh, expensive than the way that we didn't we normally sell. So I don't want to put it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, shifting gear a little bit. So one of the latest project that I saw from your Instagram is that you led uh, in this uh, book project, uh, Flores Handwoven Heritage Treasure of Textiles. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We can share a little bit more about the book. Oh yeah, the book is actually sounds very exciting. Actually, I really I have like big dream to produce like so many books about Flores and also about uh, uh, East Nusa Tenggara. Uh, every subject. But when I do this uh, Innocentia project, uh, handwoven project, and then uh, the idea I share to the government, uh, especially from the Ministry of uh, Tourism and uh, uh, <clears throat> Economic Creative of Indonesia, and then oh, they so give, it's a uh, central uh, yeah, 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 ministry. Yeah. Okay. And then they say that, oh yeah, this is nice. And then if you know it, how to manage it, and then go with it. So I start to to make it. But actually, it's not that it's not it's not that hard because I already collect uh, the photographs and the story. Also, I already have it. It's only it's only need the, the 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 chance to do it <laughs> yes, yes definitely <laughs> nice you have been collecting almost throughout yeah. your life i guess <laughs> and oh one other thing is you uh involve uh local young writers as well uh, if you can share a little bit more about that experience oh yeah uh first they they the 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 sponsor asked me to do it by myself, but I think that my social, uh, <clears throat> uh, I need I need to do something also, not only me, but also my, my, my environment also. And as I uh, spend most of my time, uh, do journey around Flores also and so connect also with the the young uh, people of Flores. <clears throat> so I think that I know that uh, so many uh, young people also here in Flores also they 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 know they know how to write well and also they are writers too. So I ask a few of them to to join with me to join with me in this project. And then also I think that is important the issue or like the subject of handwork when not only few of us who know and understand or interested with it but also it's it's better to to spread our it and then take also more and more young generation to to uh, to, to to have the awareness of the of uh, of this uh handwoven so i ask them to join in it because if they join to be a part of this team they need to do also uh some research and, and do, <laughs> the things like that so, so they are not necessarily weavers yeah yeah they they, they are not the weavers yeah. yeah they are not the weavers but we push them to know that yes, yes. <laughs> know yes definitely yeah. and i think it's a i don't know uh i'm not sure about your point of view but i think it's like very refreshing to have uh, now there are a lot of uh, writers coming out of uh, different areas that are outside of Java Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because uh, our Indonesian story used to be like very Java centric and a lot of authors are based in Java. And I think it's uh, very important and refreshing to have uh, voices from these different areas as well. Right, right, right. Because also I think that the the uh, raw and original uh, story or, or things is better said by locals than people who came from other parts. So the wrong perceptions also stereotyping is not not happening again and again and more and more. So it's better to, I mean, wherever we go as a travel, as a, as a traveler also, we want to to know something better from people that we met in that area, not from someone else, I think so. So it's also when I want to do the book project again, mm -hmm. I want to 
to yeah. to ask yeah. some more uh, people locals to write. Yeah. Uh, what was the age range of these uh, writers that you are you involved in? Uh, they are came from various <laughs> interests actually. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, some of them, one or two, they 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 did the the uh, uh, thesis and also uh, 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 research specially specific about the hydrofen, but it's only for academic uh, need. So the thesis end up in the library, library and not said to the public. <laughs> So this is also one one things that I want to I want to also uh, uh, talk about this because like every year we we have like new new uh, uh, young generation who also did the res the the uh, research about handwoven but all gone like nothing they, they are just like working in 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 other other things and that they don't want to say the the, the topics to publics mm -hmm. yeah so some of them are already did the, the uh, research and some of them uh uh they are uh, literature writers mm -hmm. yeah so i just manage and then do like some uh arrange like some uh like uh, the guideline for them to follow like what things that they, but i actually this book uh i let them free to pick what 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 the point of view that they want to uh so up. so it's of them have the different uh theme the, the uh, different themes and also a point of view so this is the sample of the book yes uh... okay. And there are, for example, like so, the ninety-five percent of the photographs are my photographs. So I already collected for four years, and then I ask uh, my friends to join it. For example, uh, this one about the uh, Mangarai uh, woven. Okay. One. It's written by uh, a girl. And this, but this one, like few few writers have specific uh, theme that they want to talk about. Like this one from uh, La Mojola is of Flores. Mm -hmm. So he wrote about how the the activity of handwoven could become uh, a moment for the woman to share they they struggles. It's of other, and then they try to figure out uh, to find this to solving their problems, like life problems or like their yeah, household problem uh, during like because in in uh, East Flores area the handwoven uh, process or uh, activity is is not like individual. It's not really individual uh, activity, but it's uh, mainly collective activity. So mostly they they spend time to to get it together in one place and then they start like talk each other and then one share the personal story and so they try to fix uh, the problem something like that yeah and also another one um, who wrote about the the handwoven in my agency in Sika in Maumere he picked the the theme about uh, the compositions. Because we have a uh, composition in in uh, our residency, like how to how to tie and how to ikat. We have a specific role of uh, compo compositions of the ikat. Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, it when one book one book release, one book produce, it is becomes next way to do it because when 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 I finish to read this book and I think that oh yeah. I think I want to do like something specific, uh, not the general, because this book is really, uh, really, really general. Only something like at glance of it, of the way and see something like that. Yep. Oh, nice. Uh, well, that book, uh, 
has already been released or will be released or it's already released but since it's sponsored by the government by the ministry so they they have it and it's not for the public soul something like that so it's just keep they use it for the souvenir and for yeah what they want to do it so we only we only write it and uh, uh, yeah nice. we wanted to um to make a book that could be read by readable by anyone who want to know about it because i mean it's it's sad if we do product book and end up only only a group of people who could read it yeah. it's better to <laughs> Yeah. to be enjoyed by anyone else <laughs> yes definitely uh yeah uh, we'll be looking forward if that is ever released to the public yeah yeah i want to yeah hopefully okay. i want to do uh, a book basically about uh sika woven <laughs> because we have like five or six different uh ethnic sub ethnics here and each of them has some particular uh patterns and some particular uh colors of uh we think so i want to want to make it like more into like encyclopedia something like that and also some um i mean daily practice saying some some sort of stories about how how people use it the way they use it is something missing from the book Yeah, then normally people don't don't write about that. So I want I want to. <laughs> I think there is uh, it's a privilege and it's also uh, special to do it because I mean I'm glad and also feel like grateful that uh, it's still easy for me to to find and to meet the the weavers, my moms and also many weavers are still active here in. around this retency so to do it it's not that easy it's not that hard only to motivate myself to do it i mean yeah, yeah. the process of the story is still is still around me so yeah so better to do it right now than later like who the masters are died or pass away and then we feel sorry and bad because we let their story like on also gone so i want to do it now <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah one of a uh, uh, very interesting observation was that uh you involve uh young writers right uh in general how does uh the younger uh people views uh flores culture in general uh, maybe not just uh, restricted to hand woven but how's their reception with all this uh different influences or like new uh, media through social medias or new ideas that they come in and what do they think about flores culture itself okay for the young generation not only uh handwoven in particular i think that uh uh by my own uh observations i think that it's it's important that if the young they 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 probably need to go out of flores first to to stay and live in other other place and then they they experience how people uh treat them as people from flores or people from outside their place and then they they start thinking about who i am and they start to know like how do i present my culture something like that and so because it's also happened to me and i think that this is also what what i do now it's it's maybe the accumulations of things that i can experience outside yeah i spent like many years uh, outside and then i see this that people do in their country so when i came back i already have something that already in my mind so when i practiced it i think i just pick one by one that i think that is called uh, uh i can do here in flores something like that so i think that they need we need to go outside of flores and also like each of us in flores because we have like really various and um uh, very complex culture in flores each of the residents have their own languages so we need to 
like when I visit the next neighbor uh, within C, I have to talk with them in Bahasa Indonesia because they don't know our, we don't know our own, uh, it's have our own mother, mother language. So, uh, I mean, to, to visit each other as a neighbor, also important to, to gain our awareness of also to, to be, to be, to be united and call ourselves as a florist, as, as a group, it's also important because if we only know and also concentrate and love our own residency, something like we do normally here in Flores because I mean, people only proud of themselves as a locals in this mm -hmm. tiny place. It's also hard to love in, in the big uh, community. So by visiting each other, and then we know like one one what what interests or one interesting things in in other place what that we have in other place so we we don't see the the world as a one dot but we see like so many things but I, so i think that young people need to go out and see <clears throat> uh other things and then back again and then they could reflect themselves something like that yeah are, are there a lot of uh, instances where people went out and then never come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is also, yeah, yeah, this is also, but yeah, this is also uh, something that I think uh, um, uh, it's back again to the choice of thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, I I I felt the same also in few years before. <laughs> Because I came into like foreign lands uh, since mm -hmm. I was eight in in primary school, I was already like, oh, I don't want to live here. I want to <laughs> live in in Europe, something like that. But maybe do the 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 way of life, uh, the adaptations, uh, the some circumstances that we we feel and then we face in that country, in that place, in foreign lands, and then. And then we suddenly we have the moment and then we ask ourselves who I am, where I come from, something like that. Yeah, very, very interesting uh, journey there. Uh, we tend to appreciate home when we are away, but when we are away, we tend to like look outside, looking for greener pasture. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but because it's still very slow and and it's still like um, a fight to to get the attention of young generation here in Flores to be to be involved or to have the attention about the culture. But I think some some subjects of the culture attempts that they already gain their attention like music. Uh, art, yeah, different different kind of art that they really really fast connected. But with handwoven, is still is still struggle. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, still, it's still like um, every now almost every week I start to to do like uh, discuss discuss discussions on radio or something, and I try to find. Who want to be the speakers of this? Because it's funny if we only the person who talk about these things, and I'm not the master of everything. I mean, probably I could speak or talk about Sika uh, particularly, but I cannot talk about handwoven from different agency. Then they need somebody who could be the uh, spokesperson, not me. <laughs> yeah. So this is this is our. Our community or our collective job, not only one or two person uh, job. So, I mean, and then and then also um, since the this job is not uh, seen as a job that could bring them to be in some levels of life, or maybe they don't see that is benefit for them because I mean. In our 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 region, in our province, uh, to be a writer itself is also not that interesting uh, for for young people. Also, I mean, in general, I mean, public mm -hmm. 
locals don't don't want to be like that. And also, they think that it's hard to be a travel writer or something like that. Because I try to go, wherever I go, I try to motivate or like, okay, we can be this, but it's still hard for them. And also, uh, people still keen into specific uh, job or activities like to be civil servant, work in the office, something like that. But to do this job, something this like this is is still not in their mind. So we have to, yeah. yeah but fine, I, I like it. I like I like to be in Flores because I mean there's still a lot of things like open to do this. Yes. <laughs> I love Plenty. to brainwash. <laughs> I want to brainwash. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes uh, yeah definitely we would love to go over there as well <laughs> and uh, we have been talking for a while and uh, what is your upcoming projects or what can we expect from Valen and Innocentia <laughs> in the near future uh, upcoming for, for Innocentia new items probably one or two not that like not the much like one or two items that we want to try because i mean we can't we cannot like release like so many variants because it could be like uh uh exhausting project like to do like so many things only specific things that we think i think that it could be could be done and then not too stressful to make it this for innocence yes. so only one or two items new items that we want to bring in or new patterns with new uh kind of base color mm -hmm. to become like have a new signature product something like that mm -hmm. <laughs> and then for the book project probably as i told you that i want to have like specific uh, book uh, project that i want to do yeah mm -hmm. i i i still I want to prepare them and especially for the book, uh, I need to prepare them first and then probably someone or, or some someone out there who interested also to be a part of this project. Yeah, I'm really open. Uh, open uh, <laughs> what, what, what sort of uh, collaborators are you looking for? Uh, I think uh, probably publications. I I. I think Indonesia we have like uh, Kompas, uh, Gramedia or Kompas, but I think to reach out more uh, readers outside of Indonesia, it's better. So if there are some uh, publisher out there who are interested, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, surely, uh, hopefully there are some people who are listening <laughs> uh, right now who might be interested to pick it up and the yeah final 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 question before we close off of uh, our conversation uh do you have any uh final words to sum up our session today uh, or your hopes for innocentia and traditional handwoven in general uh, okay uh for the final i think that uh to to know our roots, to know our heritage, or to live with our our roots or our culture, it's it's something. It is special. It is a privilege. And then to live, to make to live, and then to live it, the the heritage. It's also it's also could it could it could it money could it buy it. So, I mean, yeah, we can we can do journey, we can travel around the world, but I mean, if we travel by knowing who I am, who who we are, and then we could present like our own, we know we know we know the world as better as we know who we are is is great. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Nicely said. Uh, once again, thank you so much, Valen, for thank dropping by so today. Much. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you find it as inspiring as much as I did. And if you like this chat, do check out our previous interview with other guests over on our IGTV or check it out on our website on www.unartgallery.com. 
and of course do follow us on social media to find out more about our future events and latest happenings and until next time stay safe and take care